Kibler, the director, Risha Lilienthal, you know, who's our exhibits and uh, collections coordinator. And our guest is Andre Cohen, yeah. who is... So I am um, the uh, director of diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion programming at Mayo Clinic. And so just right up the street, Rochester, similar yeah. prairie background, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and actually, this episode is going to be a cocktail mocktail yes. show. Yes. Um, so this is my my attempt at being funny, guys. Uh, the mojito has a muddled history. Ha ha ha. ha. <laughs> 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 uh, for because, those of you who don't know why that's funny, you will once we do our cocktails. <laughs> So the popularity of the mojito began with Ernest Hemingway, the popularity, I'm right. saying, not right. the history, yes. um, during his time in Cuba. Uh, and increased when it was featured in a Bond film, as well as a Johnny Depp film. And I meant to search that, and I don't know what Oh gosh, it's the Rum Diaries. Oh, the Rum Diaries, yep. that makes yep. sense. Have you seen the Rum Diaries? <laughs> I have not seen the Rum, okay. I haven't seen them, but I know Johnny Depp's in it, so I just love it already. Uh, you know, and, and I have to say. Depp thing. I'm, I'm a, I, I was a Depp fan. I'm not so sure now. Uh, with like, all the controversy. With all the controversy yeah. and the, the, the other stuff. But you do have to give him props for um, good actor. No, oh, yeah. I, he, he's um, a character actor, and I yeah. love it. I love it. Um, Chocolat is one of my favorite roles that he played. Um, I had Jack Sparrow on my pillow for far longer than I should have. <laughs> so. She just took it off last week. <laughs> uh, it is said the original mojito was medicinal drink to curb disease on the island of Cuba. Um, moonshine rum type alcohol was mixed with mint, lime, sugar cane syrup. Although I also heard with or read with um, the sugar from the sugar cane, not just mm -hmm, the syrup. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in the 1500s, Sir Francis Drake, which I think is funny that he's referred to as Sir, Sir. Francis Drake, he's a pirate. I. Yes. Hey, how do you say it? Arr. Arr. Arr, Arr. maybe. No. <laughs> um, he landed in a man. Because, wait a minute, because isn't a sir, when you're a sir, you're a knighted. I think so. Right? You, you can only, I mean, only knights are sirs. Who, who knights a pirate? Maybe he was knighted before he turned to piracy. Uh, uh, maybe. I don't know. Can you take away your sirhood? That's a good question. <laughs> the queen knights you, right? right. And the queen, I'm sure she can revoke it. She can bound it on earth. She, she can, she can bound it. <laughs> <and> <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he lands in Havana, uh, and I had not heard this before, to sack the city of its gold. Mm. So I guess he's going to sack it. <laughs> little CSI reference there. <laughs> uh -huh. But his invasion was unsuccessful. And luckily for us, something good came of it, which was the mojito. So apparently the um, South American Indians came with this um, small, I'm sorry, the small boarding party went ashore on Cuba and they came back with the ingredients from the South American Indians for an effective medicine. Um, I'm going to butcher this because I don't speak Spanish. Aguardiente de caña, known as burning water or fire water. Mm. Um, a crude form of rum made from sugar cane. Okay. So that is the fire water or burning water. And was it medicinal against scurvy? It was. How did you know? But it's not the but it's not, not the alcohol no. that is is no. against scurvy. It's, it's the lime in the coconut. coconut. And it all up. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, this could go wrong so quick. <laughs> yeah, so to prevent scurvy and dysentery. Ooh. Yeah. Um, the name took on the drink took on the name El Drake until it became the mojito. I don't I can, know how factual that is, because I found that in one spot. I could market that. Would El Drake? It, yeah, it? I could be like a rapper called <laughs> El Drake. <laughs> well, see, I was like, is it El Drake or is it El Drake? Oh, I went with El Drake, oh. but maybe it's Drake. That makes it sound like dragon. Well, I'm thinking because of Sir Francis Drake. That's where uh, I went. Uh, El Drake. El Drake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so when Cuba was um, a Spanish slave colony, it held 
thousands of African slaves as well. Moho is an African word for magic. So there's some speculation that this is actually named from the African word moho. Is that where we get mojo? I can't answer that. No M-O-J-O, mojo. Look up mojo, put it in the comments. Tell us where you see, where you think that word mojo comes there from. Put go. it right in the mm -hmm. comments. So I, I look good. forward to seeing that. That's <laughs> good. We're not gonna do all the work for you. <laughs> uh, so then it went on to say, no matter what the true story is, the drink is making current day history all over the world. In 2013, it was the most popular cocktail global, globally. Wow. Okay. I don't think I even had a mojito in 2013. Not in 2013, but in 2019 and 20, no, 2018 and 2019, when I was living in China, I got a Meituan to my door. Like they made mojitos and I could get them, like Meituan is kind of like DoorDash, but they have a really good system in China. And I got straight to your door, you could order like five, 10 mojitos. That's wow. kind of nice. Yeah. That's dangerous. So I've been metrosexual for a long time. <laughs> and so, you know, I was hip to the mojitos way back in the 90s. 1998 wow. uh, was, was having mojitos. So this really is a drink you really, I mean, you really like the mojito back in the 90s back to today. Back in the 90s to today, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, so the, the, the thing about the mojito is, particularly in, in the summertime, um, it's just a refreshing kind of drink, whether you have alcohol oh, or not. Um, and uh, it, it, it's just, it, it, it sums summer and life yeah. and, and all sorts of things, you know, it, ocean. Mm, sun, sun it just, yes, it's everything. And it's simple, right? Sea breeze. Sea breeze. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing two versions. Okay. I, I'm gonna get funny again for a minute. Oh no. I know, I don't do this very often. <laughs> and when I do, it's really lame. We're doing the mojito cocktail and the mojito mocktail known as the nojito. The no <laughs> Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Just, just, uh, we might edit that out, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> so we're gonna start, there's a couple ways you can do this, because I did find where you could do it with the sugar, um, which is the recipe I have, or with the simple syrup. Um, we have simple syrup out for this one today. Um, and it really, it's a mixture of white rum, fresh lime, fresh mint, sugar, simple syrup, and club soda. I've been using the San Pell sparkling water and not a club soda, which is basically the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna try that. I've only had it with club soda, so. It's basically this, the same thing. This will be an experience. Uh, so, the first thing is two tablespoons of lime. Oh, I didn't pull out the tablespoon. <gasps> Just need to remind you. Uh, and two teaspoons of sugar. Um, and then eight mint leaves in each glass. Okay. Now, I did two tablespoons of simple syrup. Okay. Um, so what uh, what is the difference between the two simple syrups that you have right here in front of us? Well, so I have a lime, sweetened lime juice, which is a lime simple syrup, or the regular, and then we've got a little bit of fresh lime juice. Oh. However, I only have fresh lime juice to do one, so I was gonna let oh, our guest yeah. have the fresh, li fresh lime for his mojito and we would his do no the, no, his no hito, and we would do the sweetened yep. lime juice which is a, a lime juice a lime simple syrup oh my word my words are losing gone and Ooh. you haven't even had haven't even had, had a cocktail. cocktail this has been my whole week though it truly has so the first step is oh this isn't a shaker we're not gonna do that we're gonna do we're gonna do uh, eight mint leaves in each glass. Uh, let's everybody do their own mints. Yeah. Then we're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, I just do a, this One. is close. Oh, you're way better. I'm just doing like that. There's eight. Two. No, I, so I have little, I have little guys. Oh, so yeah. we're all, everything is a learning experience. Sure. So we count the squares of toilet paper. <laughs> we count. <laughs> That's a good practice. I will tell you, my sister, um, anytime I get together with my sisters, the one thing that always comes up is, remember how mom only told us we could use three sheets of toilet paper? One, two, three. We've, oh, and that's rough. That's, 
Well, look, I'm just glad that we got rid of the Corona paper. <laughs> yes. That was like one ply, and I felt like I was at camp for a, a year and a half. We've now just gotten into like the regular, real toilet the paper. real toilet paper, so we can find it at the big box stores. Hopefully. And, and, and Corona paper can't do one, two, three. It's more like 12, 13, 14. Well, mine didn't even, our Corona toilet paper didn't even have the brakes. Oh, in it. gee. Oh, right? I, so you're like, whoa, you're like, where do I? Where is it? <laughs> Things were tough in Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> Tougher than here. Yes, yes. We did have a policy at one point that, um, I shouldn't say a policy, an invitation to staff if they could not find toilet paper. I knew we had enough here because well, we do meetings. So it was like, if you really need a yeah. roll, just make a little mark and we'll work it out in the end. And yeah. for vol not volunteer for employee appreciation <laughs> week, um, we got a little package of toilet paper just before they were all gone. She gave us a package of toilet paper and on it said, "You're more valuable than toilet paper." And during <laughs> Corona, that was that was valuable. That was, that was, yeah. was valuable. That it was, was high a real grade. thing. <laughs> Poor little Lois was down to one roll at home. She was thrilled. All right, sorry folks, back to, <laughs> so we're gonna do the mint. So we did eight mint leaves, thereabouts. I did a few more. I kind of like it cool. really minty. Um, I like that smell. Yeah. And and then we did, then I added my simple syrup. Did I not do anything to the leaves? Yes, yet. Oh. So, oh, I did this wrong because I was gonna do, that's your simple syrup. Yeah, that's my simple syrup, <laughs> so she's. I don't have to do it. Do we need that? We were, I'm sorry, I kind of overstepped oh, there. So good. We were going to do the lime. Mm. Ooh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say we should do one of these and one of the simple syrups, Risha. Oh, okay. Because that smells That's not, yeah. Oh, you need to do it that way. Yeah. And then we muddled this. And, and I Whoa. forgot everything today, guys. I forgot the muddler. I forgot the mint. Okay, so so you have a spoon. It's a spoon on one end, and, then and a, a little flat and a little muddler. Flat. Thing. Is that called a muddler? Well, I guess I'm kind of using it as. Okay. Well. I'll let you muddle. You, didn't you say oh. muddlers normally have like more of a little ball edge to them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of a little. So this this is a little flat. Piece flat piece, yeah. The spoon is on one end, and you just kind of. And you can mash get a, it. Yeah, just mash it so you get just so you start to smell that. So do Mance. I need to use the, I mean, is, is there a wrist or, or, or I, I, elbow I, action? I should I, be... I'm usually just, oh, okay. so just get in there. So you're in there. more of the elbow than the wrist. I'm the elbow. Oh, okay. I'm the elbow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and you're going to want a little fresh lime. So okay. we're going to borrow so, about yep, two we'll tablespoons of that. Because okay. you are doing the no keto. So much. And if we need you know, more, I'm gonna put just a little bit of. This. I yes, we have a little rind to do yeah, a little twist in there. Twist in there. <laughs> um, I saw the coolest thing when I was in Minneapolis. Um, I was at Burrow, and he did a cut off a piece of a lemon about the size of a quarter, uh -huh. and he held it over the glass and he pinched it, and the juice just missed it out of the peel. Oh wow! I'm like that is so cool. He must and, have went to a good bartender. Um, he must have, because that was, <laughs> it was awesome. Um, and then I've been adding my ice and then the rum, but I, I feel like maybe we should do the rum so that it mixes in a little better. Oh, sure. um, and you're just going to do the sparkling. Yeah, I'm just going to do sparkling water. And, and, and I do want to just, you know, express to folks, like, well, I'm not anti-alcohol or anything like that. It, it is just a recognition that for some folks, this is more than just a drink, mm -hmm. and you can still have fun without without the alcohol. Right, and one of our funnest cocktail histories we did was the Shirley Temple. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, that which is a mocktail. Yeah. Two dos dos, it's and fine. then I do have clean hands, so I'm not gonna. Yeah, my, my hands are clean too. I just washed mine too, and I'm putting a little ice. Now you don't want to put too much ice because you don't want to bruise it. Right. Is that what Bru it's called? Bruise the ice or bruise the... Bru bruise the, the... I don't know. I, I don't usually know. do a hefty little... Cool. Borrow this. So I do want to say, you know, I think it's important, particularly, you know, some, as we were talking about the history pieces, the role that the transatlantic slave trade had in 
bringing all of these things together, right? right. Like yeah. the, the Spanish weren't like just floating out, you know, chilling. They were actually no. looking for gold. Yeah. And they were also looking for people to kind of help make stuff. Yeah. And so um, on, on their way, they found those folks. But are they looking for people to help make stuff or were they, they were actually looking for slaves, correct? They, they were actually looking were, to yeah, enslave. I, yeah, I was trying to make it oh, a little, really a little no, but you're, yeah, they, they were looking for human beings to put into their machine yeah, called yeah, slavery. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and the interesting thing, you know, we talked a little bit about Cuba, but we didn't talk about the West Indies, which fed into Cuba. Mm -hmm. And so the West Indies was a, a place for sugar. And so they, right. would, they would run, uh, I don't want to say it like this, but they would run their slaves, so to speak, 24 hours a day. And the average age of a slave in the West Indies was about 23 years old, oh. right? So they would work these folks to to their death yeah. at yeah. 23. And it, that was that was um, hard to read about, um, knowing that that was the only purpose. They didn't. There was no care. There was no concern. It was a, like you said, it was a, a machine. It was a yeah. machine, and they would put people yeah. in, and sugar would come out. Yeah. Right. I mean, it right. Was, yeah. You know, I hate to, to put it that way. That, but that was that was the deal. Yeah. And like I remember in school, we would always go with the three G's of what they would do when they were going from Europe over to like the Americas and all that. It was God, glory, and gold. Yeah. And so that was part of the glory using people to bolster themselves up and give themselves whatever they could. Yeah. 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 And if you think of this, is in the 1500s. Yeah. Yeah. We still have those ramifications today. Yeah, as a, as a matter of fact, I, I would love for people to, to research and put in the comments, who were the original people of Haiti? Oh. Who were the original people of the Dominican Republic? Right. That's an interesting question. Because when we think about it, we, we think about these brown skin, black sure. Afro folks, but they weren't the first people there. There were people before them. And so who were those people? Sure, right. good so, question. So good question, so good we'll, question. we'll look for your answer uh, in the comments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's do right. cheers. Right. Let's cheers. see how everybody's beverages hold up here. I love a mojito. Well, I could even use a little more simple syrup than that. Yeah. Mine's a little. Yeah, no, this mm -hmm. is this is great. I love it. I, I will grab a little. Which one did you want? Lime I want the real one, and I'm gonna do a little real lime in mine too. Yeah, I have to tell lime? you yes, that the real no, you have oh. the real lime because I already have some. The real lime really brings out the it does. the the effervescence. Yes, right. It, more, much more so than the sweetened lime juice. Well, yeah, yeah. I yeah. should have brought my juicer and mm. all my limes. Oh, that made it better. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's really good. So Risha says she can tie the mojito to Fremont County history. Just a oh, little really? bit. How a little bit that? of a stretch. Come bring it okay. On. Okay. So um, that's that's a very big stretch. We'll see if we get to that one. But um, I have a little bit a uh, hundred years ago in 1921. So connected a little bit because of there was the pirate and seafaring stuff. And uh, the Albert Lee High School in 1921 put a whole bunch of like Gilbert and Sullivan musicals together and like Pirates of Penzance they put together uh, with a couple of other ones and did a play, a musical called All at Sea. Oh, that yeah. is cool. Isn't that fun? And so there's a whole like, I have a list of the cast and stuff, and one of them was. Um, Captain Corcoven was one name, and there was also a pirate king. <laughs> pirate king. Oh, you have to have a pirate king. Of course. And there was a police sergeant, too, though. But, um, there was a little buttercup was a gal named Sybil Yates was her name. And that some people might know hearing uh, Linda, our lovely librarian, said that she was a uh, teacher here for years and years oh. and years. And so her, in high school, she was Little Buttercup in All at Sea. And Jim Munyer, who's downstairs actually right at this very moment, he was a teacher and he taught at the same time as Sybil Yates. And yeah, so he, he, uh, Linda said, Jim might know her. And I said, Jim, do you know Sybil Yates? He's like, uh-huh. Yeah, that's a real person. <laughs> <laughs> and he said uh, that she was about probably two inches shorter than me. 
Oh, she's a little tiny thing. Uh -huh. So she's wow. probably like four, eight, four, like a nine. pie pocket. Wow. Right. Yeah. Um, but she also right. was known to be very good at taking command of her classroom. Okay. So she has to be though for being. So so what was all at sea about? What was the uh, basic tenor? It was... was it a comedy? Was it a drama? A mixture? Oh, I didn't even know. It was an operetta. I was gonna say, but it's that. musical. Yeah. Yep. Um, because off of Gilbert and Sullivan, it would have to be right. Yeah. So all of their yeah. stories were, were musicals, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't say what genre it was, but it was yeah, it was an operetta a musical. Um, an operetta means that it was not quite the opera where everything was sung, but it was more singing than musical. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what kind it was though. We'll but I'm guessing it was a comedy. If you are on YouTube, look up. <laughs> well, and so, I don't know but if it's, it's a Freeborn County Elderly right, High School thing. Right. So they yeah, probably it's can. not going to be. It's yeah. probably not going to be yeah. there. Like but they pulled it together themselves. This is an American original. Yes. Freeborn yeah. County oh, original. original to Freeborn County. And that same year, in the newspaper, in our Freeborn County newspaper, they um, had a whole list of sailors who held odd beliefs. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What are some? Um, so, uh, nearly all ships carry a horseshoe. You know, which, like, horseshoes is good, good luck. Really good luck. If they're turned up. Yes, yes. Yes. And you're only supposed to sh throw them over which shoulder, right? Oh, that's salt. No, that's yeah. salt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm staying, I'm staying clear shoes. of you around horseshoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, wow. what's a baby sailor's costume? Oh, that's What's a baby's call? <laughs> well, but sailors wear a baby's call, and it was uh, to keep himself immune from death by drowning. Baby's wow. Call. I would, I'm going to tell you, I don't know what it was, but I would probably wear it. <laughs> All right, just to be safe. <laughs> just to be safe. <laughs> spell it. Spell it. C-A-U-L. C-A-U-L. Oh. Cool. Well, you're, 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 I was going to say, I don't have my phone. You've got to Google that. C-A-U-L. Oh, and you know how sailors are like, land ho! You know, you hear the first one. That's probably because the sailor who first sights land will have a good voyage home. Oh, oh that's a superstition. Oh. Yeah. Uh, they were also afraid of land lubber lingo. Yeah. Land lubber yeah. lingo. So like you weren't allowed to say floor. Why? Have to be the deck. Oh. Yep, deck or the cabin. Um, <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta think about this call thing oh, no. a little oh. bit differently. Oh, oh no! Uh, I just looked it up. I oh, just no. googled it, and it is um, the embryonic membrane enclosing, I if it was gonna enclosing a fetus. So. That's a little, you. Yeah, that's a little, that is a little bit strange. That's a little bit strange. We've, strange. we've gone strange. into monkey gland territory. Right. Oh, no, you. <laughs> yeah, wow. so back to our previously scheduled program. <laughs> right, wow. <laughs> so, whistling at sea stirs up evil winds. Oh, interesting. And like I'm imagining Pirates of the Caribbean. But um, at one point, there's like one of the guys is whistling, and then that's when the big bad pirate ship comes. Oh, it's like that was the ominous whistling. So I'm like, oh, we were doing their research there. Yeah. Um, a cuttlefish swimming on top of the waves means that a storm's coming. Well, that that probably has some truth to right, it because scientific. I probably watched that. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, most sailors wore earrings for luck. Uh, that's why they pierced ears a lot. Um, okay. And do you know what a petrel is? It's a kind of bird. Okay. Okay. Uh, it was unlucky to kill a petrel because they uh, were called Mother Carrie's chickens, which is. <laughs> <laughs> No, this was titled what strange sailors hold odd beliefs. Odd beliefs. Yes. Odd beliefs. <laughs> and um, the, which that's a corruption of Mater Cara or Mother Dearest. And um, they are sailors' friends because they give warning of an approaching storm. Oh, wow. okay. And legend has it that each of these birds bear the soul of a dead seaman. Oh. Yeah. So those are some of the odd beliefs. And I have one more that kind of ties to Ernest Hemingway because this was his favorite. Okay. Uh, did you know that Ernest Hemingway loved cats? I did not know that he loved cats. Specifically cats that have five toes. Well, who doesn't love a five-toed cat? It's What's called it? a mitten kitten. Is that is what it's it really? Called? Well, they got mittens. Yeah, they, they make, make a mitten. They look like a mitten. Yeah. 
Is it a mutation? Is I, that... I think it's a genetic thing. Oh, okay. yeah. You yeah. see it? I mean, you see it often yeah, enough. Yeah, they're cute. I, is... and they, when they, so like when they take your hand, they, they actually can take Grab your hand. Your hand. Like, Aww. They've got, when they do their little muffins. Yeah. Aww. Their muffins. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but cats were considered unlucky on board. Sure. And so I have a very, very odd extra thing about cats. Oh, please. Um, <laughs> I knew there was a setup. I was like, where's really? this cat? She, <laughs> she cat is going? stretching I'm this super she is. here. <laughs> so great. I love talking about our archaeology. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a mastodon vertebra. Yeah. And that, it was not found with any other pieces of a mammoth, which is where it was found. And that's likely because uh, one of our the saber-toothed cats actually got that mammoth and then put right, part of it off. Uh huh. Oh, and whoa. so away. And so it was one of our saber-toothed cats in Freeborn County. Oh, that's the best one. Isn't that cool? Yeah, best for last, folks. Yeah. So Freeborn County had saber-toothed cats. Mm -hmm. So Freeborn wow. County and uh, this area is. Um, Oh, I'm not going to retain. We were the, on the. What was the archaeological? What was stuff? our um? <laughs> not iceberg. Oh, the the, the, the Des Moines the glacier, lobe, the, the lobe, lobe. The yes. Des Moines lobe. Des Moines yes. Lobe. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we have lots of lakes. Mm -hmm. um, if you cross a little bit in Steele County in Ellendale, where I live, we have some of the best drinking water you can find because of that. Um, there's a lot of spring-fed lakes, I believe, mm -hmm. that that ties into that. That is so cool. Yeah, so mm -hmm. mammoths, so Siberian tigers. Yeah. Um, what's the bear? Oh gosh, the, big, the, like, the, the, oh, the... Like a bear dog. Like a giant bear. It's, it, it's, I it makes a ground. grizzly look small. My, oh, wow. my favorite is the giant ground sloth. Yes. Yes, those <laughs> things are really ah, cool. Yeah, right? But I understand why, they, why they're extinct. Like, can't be a ground sloth. <laughs> like that. You gonna get with a saber tooth. It'd be tough enough being a tree sloth. Yes, you know. Let alone a ground sloth. Yeah. Uh, and also, it got warmer, so it's like, oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. 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 Very good tie in for Freeborn County. Yeah. Um, here's to Freeborn County. Here's to Freeborn County. County. And guests at our table. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.